Hello everyone and welcome. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, I've got mine here. Sit back, relax, and we're gonna talk about a topic that comes up a lot during my job when I train baristas or when I talk to customers. And that is the question of which coffees have more or less caffeine. Now some people are only talking about it in terms of light versus dark roasts, while some people want to know whether there's a difference in caffeine between espresso and something like a pour over. So we're going to cover both topics today in this video and it's actually more complicated than you might think. First things first, we need to understand two core concepts of roasting coffee. The first is that the act of roasting, so taking green beans and turning them into a roasted bean, has virtually no effect on the level of caffeine in that bean. Whatever caffeine was in there at the start when it was a green bean is still in there and still exists in the same amount after it's roasted. There's a common misconception out there that roasting somehow bakes away caffeine and that it reduces it, but this is not true. So that's number one. The second concept that we need to know is that by roasting a bean further and further and developing it more from light to medium to dark, you are making it more and more porous. The cells expand during roasting and the actual weight of each individual bean gets lighter as you roast darker. Just to drive this point home, if you were to take the same beans and roast it really light and then roast another batch really dark, each individual bean will weigh more as a light roast than it will a dark roast. So now that we have each of these pieces of information, this is where it starts to get really interesting, where we actually combine them. Because if the caffeine doesn't change per individual bean, but you need more beans for a dark roast to get the same weight as a light roast, then as long as you are weighing your coffee for brewing, the dark roast will have more caffeine because you are using more individual beans. It's hard to show an example here because at this roast we don't do a light and a dark roast of the same bean, but I'll show you something close. So here I've got a pretty light roasted coffee, uh, one getting a little bit more to a medium and one that is very dark. Uh, this one you can see a lot of the oils on it, um, a very, very dark roast. So we don't actually do roasts like this normally at our roastery. Um, this was for a one-off event. Um, you can just see really how oily this is. And, and I want you guys at home who are dark roast drinkers to tell me in the comments below if this is normal for you or if this amount of oil is abnormal. I feel like it's not normal, but again, we don't really do many dark roasts, so um, let me know in the comments. Anyway, to continue this scenario, if we were to take 10 grams of each coffee and then count out the individual number of beans in those 10 grams, we would find that the light roast has the least number of beans. Let's say something like 55 beans. The medium, more closer to medium roast, might have 60 beans. Uh, and the 10 grams of the dark roast might contain something like 65 beans or even 70 beans. So you can easily see how the dark roast might have more caffeine content by about 10 to 15 beans. But let's be careful here because remember, this is only if you weigh your coffee. The whole game changes if you don't weigh it. If you use a scoop or some other volumetric measurement, then if the sizes of the beans are relatively similar between a light roast and a dark roast, you're probably going to end up scooping a similar amount of beans. And that would lead us to nearly identical amounts of caffeine. So this is why I say that it's more complicated than people realize. And this is only comparing two of the same bean, of a light roast and a dark roast of the same coffee. Imagine trying to compare uh, two different coffees of, from different countries with different processing methods. And it was gonna be much, much harder to get an accurate guess of differing ca caffeine content um, without scientific tools and analysis. But as an average consumer who has no access to those tools and just wants a simple cup of coffee when I walk into a cafe, I think that what we've covered here is pretty good. So why don't we move on here to the differences in coffee brewing. And the previous two concepts that we discussed will actually help us here as well. But there is one additional concept that is useful, which is that during extraction, caffeine is a compound that is extracted and dissolved into the water fairly early on in the process. This is helpful for us because it means that even if we've had a bad extraction, we've still likely taken most, if not all, of the caffeine that was available to us. So comparing between brewing methods is actually a fair thing to do without too many complications. Let's start with an easy example, using the exact same bean, roasted to a medium level, and used to brew a pour over, 
versus an espresso. In this case, it really comes down to how much coffee you're using per serving, or more specifically, how many individual beans. At our cafe, we use 18 grams of coffee for our espresso and for our pour overs. So for us, because the coffee is the same roast in this scenario, we can confidently say that the same number of individual beans is being used for each cup. So there, the caffeine content should be the same. But if you pull larger shots, let's say 22 grams in your espressos, then in that case, the espresso will have more caffeine. Those are easy ones though, because the beans are the same and they've been roasted the same. So what about the same beans, but one batch is roasted light for a pour over and a second batch is roasted dark for espresso. In this case, it gets a bit more tricky because if we use 18 grams of the light roast for our pour over, it's going to use less individual beans than the 18 grams of our dark roast for our espresso. So we should assume that the espresso has slightly more caffeine, even more so if we were to use larger doses like 20 or 22 grams. But I should say here that we don't want to over exaggerate the difference. If it really comes down to just four or five beans, depending how far apart the roasts really are, then while we can technically say that the dark roasts use more beans and has more caffeine, the amount might be very, very small and it might not actually be noticeable by the average person. So just be careful how much we're actually stretching this difference. One more example here, which is kind of interesting is what if we used more coffee for our pour over than our espresso? Let's say 22 grams of the light roast for the pour over and 18 grams of the dark roast for the espresso. I'll give you guys a moment to think about it. Throw your answers down in the comments before I give the answer. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. Thought about it? Well, we would probably say they're similar to each other in terms of caffeine content, because while the light roast needs less beans, you're using more weight. And while the dark roast would need more beans, you're using less weight than the pour over. So all in all, they're probably pretty similar. So I hope this is making sense and becoming easier to play these scenarios through in your mind. This is generally how I assess the situations at our cafes and answer the questions of customers when they ask about caffeine content. And one last note for you caffeine sensitive people who clicked on this video, hoping to find a solution to lower the caffeine content of your caffeinated coffee. You can actually control the amount of caffeine that goes into your cup just by tweaking some of your technique when you're doing a pour over, like a V60 or a Kalita Wave, anything that percolates down. I've done one video on this for the V60 and I'll link it up here if you haven't watched it. It's not my original idea, but there is a brewing method where you can pull out a good chunk of the caffeine at the beginning of the pour over. And some people have anecdotally reported that it works for them. So check that video out if you want to reduce caffeine uh, in your life. And that'll do it for today. So if you enjoyed this content, please like the video and also consider subscribing. I do reviews, brewing tutorials, tips and tricks, everything you need to up your coffee game and feel confident about the coffee that you're brewing at home or in your cafe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all again in the next video. Have a great day.